Hey, what's up, nerds? It's Paul again at Radio Free Hammer Hall, digging in again today into Slanesh. And uh, what I'm going to be looking at is the units in the army, their roles, how they kind of fit into everything, uh, their overall power and efficiency. Um, but the big thing is, you know, determining what each unit is really good at. All right. So the things that I'm taking a look at just the mathematical analysis of how much damage they do and how efficiently they do it for their points. Also going to look at movement, their defensive stats, other abilities that they have, and their interactions with everything else. All of their battle traits, other heroes, and whatnot. All right. I'm going to start quick and easy with the ranged units, since there's really only two, the Blissbarb Archers and Blissbarb Seekers. So for overall output, they're, the Archers are definitely better. Their basic stats are the same. The regular Archers are just putting more arrows in the air um, rather than the Seekers. Their threat range is both the same. You have a shorter shot on the bliss barb seekers but they make up for it exactly with their uh increased movement uh mobility obviously the seekers are going to win they have double the move as the archers and uh for synergies the seekers are able to benefit from the uh retreat ability with uh without taking damage from the Seeker Cavalcade, which can be very useful in, you know, getting these guys out. They um, they don't really want to be in melee, so you get them out. So if you're just going for straight range damage, go with the Archers. If you're going for uh, something that is more for harassment, hanging out on the sides and throwing a few arrows in and... You know, being a prospector unit, you know, going for the enemy backfield, grabbing battle tactics, uh, all of those sorts of things. And they can also just be decent chaff. Like, they can just go hang out in the middle, set up your charges for other things, which is kind of a, an issue in this army, is, you know, wanting to set up charges. Okay. Our melee output. This is just our base output when we're not getting any bonuses of any kind, whether it be charging or uh, anywhere else. So our overall uh, melee output, um, your Seekers are both the best value and their best output, which is crazy um, because they're even better when they charge. Um, to my surprise, the Slangor Fiend Bloods are surprisingly, uh, like they're surprisingly efficient. They're throwing a decent amount of damage on, uh, just being flat-footed without charging. They don't get charge bonuses, uh, and as you'll see, they even really hold their own when uh, they're compared to the other units that are charging. Um. Uh, after that, things kind of start going downhill fairly quickly. Um, you know, the um, the demonettes, they don't have a ton of output when they're not charging, but they're doing it for super cheap. So they're very efficient. You know, you probably, to actually do damage without charging, you're probably going to want to reinforce the unit to 20. Um your fiends, I mean, they throw out some damage. They have a pretty good ability, but there's not much else going on with them. So uh, in terms of efficiency, um, oh, and I, I apologize. I, I got the efficiency piece wrong on the Slick Blade Seekers. They fall way to the bottom because they're just, they're doing a lot of damage, but they're 190 points for five of them. Um, Hell Striders hanging out at the bottom of both of these all right let's move on to um our buffs and this is charges and other abilities um 
so here, you know, you can definitely see the Slick Blade Seekers are number one, again, for your melee output, just for the base unit of five. Hellstriders, also efficient. Demonettes are also, uh, they're adding 50% to their overall output when they charge. So, and they're still that 110 points. So they are highly efficient. They're going to get in there and absolutely blend stuff. But as we're going to see, they only move six inches. So, and then if they're not charging, if they get charged, they are just going to get mulched by whatever touches them. They are your absolute glass cannon in this army. They either charge and trade up or they die. Basically what's going on. And because they only move six inches compared to like the 12 of all of the cavalry that you have, they're a lot more likely to get charged and be in a bad position. Um, you'll notice here on both of these, like the pain bringers and twin souls are both kind of towards the bottom of like damage output. Those are both really more defensive units, as we're going to see. Um, here, you see the Slongor are still hanging out in fourth place. So they're they're still doing a moderate amount of damage um, compared to the things that get charge bonuses. Um, Fiends definitely hanging out at the bottom here. Like, everything else just wrecks them in comparison. Okay, our other factors. We got our 12-inch movers. That is our Slick Blade Seekers, Hell Striders, and Regular Roll Seekers. Even better on the uh, Slick Blades, they can reroll their charges. And the Regular Seekers, they um, have that ability where when they run, if it's a roll of less than a four, it becomes a four. So they're always running a minimum of four could also be five or six as usual your fiends move 10 which is not bad which almost gives them a roll and then you've got all of your six inch movers demonettes slong gore pain bringers and twin souls now i think important to note here is how their mobility is comparing to their defense so your twin souls and your pain bringers they are they're slow so they're gonna get charged a lot but they both can take a punch really well the pain bringers have a three up save the twin souls have a four up save five up ward and your opponent is minus one to their attacks characteristic when they charge them like the five up ward is when they don't charge so they really need to stay in place but they just take a punch like nobody else. Um, the Slick Blades are kind of next on that, and the Hell Striders and Regular Seekers, kind of all in the same category. Um, they're just a five-up save. Then you get down to the Demonettes all the way at the bottom with uh, 10 wounds, but they're a six-up save and a six-up ward. They're just going to get blasted off the field. They've got no other real defense to them. So, again, showing really your demonettes are very much a glass cannon. So you need to be a skilled player and set up their charges, get stuff out of their way, but keep it in the way um, when you're uh, trying to set up. You know, bait your opponent's charges in to maybe some twin souls. The twin souls kind of bounce them, retreat out of combat, and then uh, the demonettes can flood it. So our unit rolls. What does everything do? Your anvils are definitely your twin souls and pain bringers. I think the twin souls are better at that in general. The pain bringers are a little bit floundering for their identity. Um, I think if they were cheaper, they'd be a little more attractive. They get, they improve their rend when they are, uh, contesting an enemy objective that you don't control. So they, they want to be pushing enemy stuff off of objectives. The problem is like 
everything else in the army just does that better than they do and it, so it, that then that kind of gets confused with then they have a three up save as well so i don't know um your units that really want to charge your slick blade seekers your hell striders your pain bringers and your demonettes um, all of those are getting charge bonuses your most mobile things again the seekers the slick blades the hell striders with the seekers and slick blades both having additional abilities to move uh, and then your units that just have power when they are standing still they receive a charge they're not getting charged they're uh, they charge last turn and they're still in combat all of that kind of stuff the slick blades definitely still at the top followed by the slon gore uh, and the fiends both of those finally appearing on having a role in general um this unit i think wants to always be charging you follow the basic abcs of warhammer and you really want to be mobile so what does that really give us your slick blade seekers are fantastic they have uh they natively just reroll charges uh if you use the seeker cavalcade they can retreat and charge and have no penalty to do so there they just have a whole bunch of stuff in here your twin souls are just an absolute best anvil that you have in this army they're the only thing pretty much in the whole army that can take a punch and still be standing pretty well your daemonettes are incredibly powerful when they charge they're just slow comparatively six inches is still not bad but they're um i i struggle to personally want to use them i also hate their models so i'm just they're not going to end up in my lists i'm probably not even going to buy any um the slon gore i think i might try out um just because they come in the spearhead box so i might as well build some and see how they actually do in practice rather than just in theory um but yeah like a lot of slick bait blade seekers for me for sure and twin souls um, nice clearly defined roles and they're very good at their roles okay here's basically what i'm looking at for what i'm probably going to be running as like the core of a list for myself uh two units of slick blades two units of bliss barb seekers either two units of twin souls or one reinforced unit of twin souls and then a unit of reinforced bliss barb archers so that comes out to 1260 points and it um gives us 740 points of room to season to taste with the rest of it uh with your heroes your monsters and anything else that you might want to throw in there um so that's that's kind of where i'm going to be starting i really like those units a lot i think it gives you everything is pretty good at their role uh and as long as you really kind of stick to thinking about the role and you know keep your bliss barb archers back and protected you know make them euphoric and just shoot away um while your seekers get set up for charges and your bliss barb seekers uh, float around the sides grab um some battle tactics maybe grab some deep objectives and uh generally just kind of harass from the board edges make your opponent kind of like want to pull apart like you have like the seeker your slick blade seekers kind of in the middle with your twin souls and then your slick blade or i'm sorry your bliss barb seekers out on the sides so they're kind of like divided like which way do i go my watch list now these are all things that i think um could be good if they get uh price drops um your regular old seekers i think because they are so fast 
and if they were just a bit cheaper they would be really good in a chaff sort of role where they run up and take up a whole bunch of space to guard your um guard your core like um protect your slick blades so that um you can set up the charge with the seekers uh and also then just protect your archers as well uh hell striders they are like the discount slick blade seekers so if they get a bit cheaper they'll be more efficient and then you know they might have a real choice between like a reinforced unit of hell striders versus a unit of uh slick blades then the Slongor Fiend Bloods, I think the the only thing that's really holding them back is they need to be a bit cheaper. Um, once they're a bit cheaper, I think they have an interesting role as uh, kind of a counterpunch kind of unit that, you know, doesn't necessarily need to make charges into combat to be effective in combat. So that is going to be it for now. Um, I just wanted to kind of go through the math of uh, all the unit roles and figure out uh, what I really want to use, where my priorities are. I'm going to be soon doing basically the same thing with all of your uh, heroes and monsters. So watch out for that, and I will talk to all of you later.